Hi there, Mike MacArthur from the Oshkosh Public Library, here to bring you some more Librarian Learns. This is the series where I take a look at some local Oshkosh history that either I've wondered about myself or that people have asked me about while I've been working at the library here. Short announcement before we get into today's topic. The Oshkosh Public Library has just digitized 138 yearbooks from the Oshkosh High School dating back from 1906 to 1940. These can be found on our website under the digital collections. They're full of great photos, history, sports, memories. Uh, if you had grandparents or maybe great-grandparents who went to school in Oshkosh, I suggest you check them out. These are all free, downloadable, very searchable. There is a link in the description. And to stay on with that theme, let's take a look at Oshkosh High School. Oshkosh's first permanent high school building, or secondary school building, was built in 1867, pretty much where City Hall stands today. This was a gorgeous uh, cream-colored bricked building built in the Second Empire style with this fantastic central tower and a mansard roof that could hold up to about 500 students. It never did because it burned down in 1901. Though this was definitely a, loss, a historical loss and a loss of an important architectural uh, landmark in the city, the Northwestern at the time noted... Those interested in school are not greatly grieved over the loss of the building itself, as it was considered many years out of date and inadequate. And thus begins a pattern you might pick up on when it comes to Oshkosh and schools that continues to this very day. In 1903, the original high school was replaced by what was commonly referred to as the Red Brick Building. This building, though very beautiful, was pretty much obsolete the moment they finished construction. Oshkosh's student population was growing so fast that in 1911, the city had to build the Orville Beach Memorial Building to handle the manual training school. This is the building that's right next door uh, to where City Hall is today. Uh, but it did nothing to alleviate the overcrowding in the Red Brick Building. So the city had to start drawing up plans for an addition to the Red Brick Building that would soon uh, house over 1,200 students. Local architects William Waters and Henry Aller were selected to design the building in 1914, and construction was completed by C.R. Meyer and Sons. The new school opened in January 1916. In less than a generation, it was already outdated and bursting at the seams with students. Over the next 12 years ensued what author Michael Gock referred to as a classic Oshkosh Donnybrook. I had to look that word up. The debate was over whether to build a new structure somewhere else in town or renovate the current uh, structures. There were arguments over cost. Then there was the uh, fight over where a new school would even go. It was a very North Sider versus South Sider argument. Then there was the battle between the school board, which controlled the education planning and the building planning, and the city council and mayor, who controlled the money. In 1954, they took it to the taxpayers, the people, to decide. And an advisory referendum was handed to the community. The people of Oshkosh voted to remodel the existing buildings. The school board disagreed and went right on ahead planning a new facility. Then in 1956, three referendums were brought to the voters. One, to approve the new location of the proposed high school on, up on Walnut Street. The second was to approve the design of the new high school. And the third was to approve a bond to fix and remodel the existing high school structures. And the voters rejected all three. Back to square one, essentially. But by 1958, by a slim margin, a new referendum was successfully passed that would put a new high school on the corner of Southland and Eagle, which at the time was just outside uh, the city limits. Why did they finally get it done? Maybe people were just tired of arguing about it. There was a change in the form of government that lessened some of the north side or east side or ten tensions. Maybe the situation at the central high school had become so bad that people knew that the status quo really could not stand any longer. In 1963, the new Oshkosh High School opened 
after the demolition of the red brick building to make way for a parking lot and significant renovations to the building, the city government moved in to the vacated high school where it stands today. However, less than a decade later, it became apparent that the new high school still could not handle the explosive growth of the baby boomer generation as they were entering high school into the late 60s. So plans were drawn up again for another high school. This time the high school was to be placed on the north side of town, ironically not that far away from the location that was rejected by voters in 1956. It was not without its own bit of controversy. The school board wanted to honor one of Oshkosh's most famous female citizens, the famous suffragette Jessie Jack Hooper. So they went ahead and named the high school Jesse Hooper High. People flipped out, apparently. Uh, students especially were freaked out about all the creative taunts they would face at, like, basketball games. If you have any creative suggestions of how to, you know, hurl insults at people, uh, an opposing team from Jesse Hooper High, throw them in the comments. So after the massive public backlash to the name, the school board reversed its decision and eventually settled on the very geographically appropriate names for the new two high schools, Oshkosh North and Oshkosh West. Hi, so here I am in front of what used to be Oshkosh High School, now City Hall. It's still a gorgeous building. Not much of it has changed. Here you can see where it looks kind of awkward there is where the front steps used to be. It's greatest advantage when it was built became its greatest liability, which is location. It was built at a time when the center of Oshkosh was right here, uh, downtown. It's like two blocks away from Main Street. Uh, I was related to some interesting stories that, you know, the cool seniors would hop on down to like the Magnet Bar for lunch and probably shoot some pool and probably smoke cigarettes because they're the cool kids. But that that ultimately, its location here became a liability in that it was boxed in. There was no for, nowhere for it to grow. Uh, Oshkosh's center of population was kind of moving, moving north and moving uh, south and moving west uh, in the 1950s and into the 60s. So here I am from a slightly different perspective. So I can see the uh, old uh, Orville Beach Manual Training School behind me uh, that was converted into apartments and a first floor coffee shop uh, not too long ago. They fit in nicely with that neoclassical uh, revival style that was very popular at the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, and it still holds up that Bedford limestone, the columns, classy. So hey, I learned something. That was a fun one. <laughs> Talking about the high schools was way more interesting and drama filled than I thought it was going to be. Uh, as always, if you like these videos, leave comments, uh, like, subscribe, uh, share it with your friends on Facebook. Uh, if you'd like to know more about Oshkosh high school history, uh, I suggest checking out some of the links or references I put in the description below. And with that, I'll see you later.